Last week, Aaron Dykes covered how the UN has been incrementally trying to dig into our Second Amendment. Well, guess what? It's hitting home now because we just released a, a story today titled UN Gun Grab Follows State Department Plan. This is going to get scary. The UN Arms Trade Treaty that has been identified by observers as a flagrant threat to the Second Amendment in which Barack Obama is determined to sign has its roots in a 1961, you hear that, 1961 State Department mem Memorandum which explains how the United Nations will oversee complete disarmament of all the people under the ruse of preventing war. Are you hearing me? That's what they're talking about. They're going to take your guns under the ruse of preventing war. Let's go to that document. And we'll come back to this in one second. Here's the document. What's, it's entitled Freedom from War, State Department Publication 7277, released September 1961. Okay? September 1961 is when they started writing this. And you know what it says here? The United States Program for General and Complete Disarmament and a Peaceful World. Yeah, the only ones that are going to have guns are the United Nations soldiers. And guess what? There's not going to be any peace with them. They're going to be kicking your heads in and shooting everybody in sight. And they've already done it. It's happened time and time again. You can look at Africa. You can look in East Asia. That's what they plan on doing. That's their version of peacekeeping. We're going to go into this document right now. From the Office of Public Services Bureau of Public Affairs. It only cost 15 cents. It was interesting. And in uh, 1961. So in their introduction, they talk about a program for general and complete disarmament in a peaceful world. Okay, make no mistake about it. This isn't just hidden one time in this document. We're going to go through it all. They talk about freedom from war and security for all states. And what does security for the state mean? That means no security for the individual. That means you don't have any rights. It's only the state that's going to have rights. First, there must be immediate disarmament action. And this is written by our State Department. A goal of general and complete disarmament. Second, all disarmament obligations must be subject to effective international controls. You know what that means? No Second Amendment. They talk about the stages of the disarmament process. Third, adequate peacekeeping machinery must be established. Nations are unlikely to shed their means of self-protection in the absence of alternative ways to safeguard their legitimate interests, <laughs> like freedom from tyranny. This can only be achieved through progressive strengthening of international institutions under the United Nations and by creating a United Nations Peace Force to enforce the peace as the disarmament process proceeds. You guys, you better get serious. You better start talking to people. You better start warning people because it's going to start happening soon. There are, we know they're already training to do this. We've already been telling you this for years. Okay? And here it is from 1961, and it's been incrementally happening. Let's go back to the document. Disarmament goals and objectives. Preserve internal order and contributions to a United Nations Peace Force. So that's taxes that they're going to use from us to go back and take your guns later through the United Nations, through the blue hats. Establishment and effective operation of an internal disarmament organization within the framework of the United Nations to ensure compliance at all times with all disarmament obligations. Okay? Governing principles. We're going to move down here. Inspection and verification must establish both that nations carry out scheduled limitations or reductions and that they do not retain armed forces and armaments in excess of those permitted at any stage of the disarmament process. There it is, right there, in the document. Here we go on page four. Arms and armed forces would be reduced. The armed forces of the United States and the Soviet Union would be limited to 2.1 million men each, with appropriate levels not exceeding the amount for other military, militarily significant states. Levels of armaments would be correspondingly reduced, and their production would be limited. This is all by a world body. This is not going to be through anything through our country. This is through the United Nations, which means there's no negotiations. There's only killing people and machine gunning them when they don't comply. States would be committed to other measures to reduce international tension and to protect the chance of war by accident, miscalculation, or surprise attack. And they go through a second stage and a third stage. Here we go in the third stage. The manufacture of armaments would be prohibited except for those agreed types and quantities to be used by the UN Peace Force and those required to maintain internal order. 
all other armaments would be destroyed or converted to peaceful purposes. This all sounds beautiful and glowing in your new world order, but you know what it's going to be? It's going to be used to come in and take your wealth, take your property, take everything you have, and they're going to start by taking your guns. Here we go to the Declaration on Disarmament. The United States program, let's get a shot of this. People aren't going to believe it until they see it. Here it is right here. This is their appendix. It said, Declaration on Disarmament. The United States program for general and complete disarmament in a peaceful world. The nations of the world, conscious of the crisis in human history produced by a revolutionary development of modern weapons within a world divided by serious ideological differences. That means those who are for freedom and those who want to take everything from you and live lavish while you live as a slave. Determined to save present and seceding generations from the scourge of war and the dangers and burdens of the arms race and to create conditions in which all people can strive freely and peacefully to fulfill their basic aspirations as long as they kneel to the new world order, declare their goal to be a free and secure a free, secure, and peaceful world of independent states that it will not happen. It will be no independent states. Adhering to the common standards of justice and international conduct and subjecting the use of force to the rule of law. A world where adjustment to change takes place in accordance with the principle of the United Nations, which means nobody has guns, and everybody listens to the United Nations. A world where we shall be a permanent state of general and complete disarmament under effective international control and where the resources of nations shall be devoted to man's material, cultural, and spiritual advance set forth as the objectives under a program of general and complete disarmament in a peaceful world. So what does all that mean? Well, that means they're going to take your guns, and once they take your guns, you're not going to have any type of freedom of speech. You're not going to have any type of freedom of the press. You're not going to have anything. And we already reported on this before. I want to go back to the UN gun grab follow State Department plan. This came out today from Paul Joseph Watson, dated Monday, July 16th, 2012. There's the article. You can go read it all on Infowars.com. Uh, they link to a Forbes article under here. It's the UN Arms Treaty has caused so much controversy because it outlines a plan to target all types of conventional weapons, notably small arms and light weapons, according to Forbes' Larry Bell. There's the Forbes article. So even Forbes is saying they're coming after your Second Amendment. All right? And Forbes isn't known for protecting the Second Amendment at all. They also have a quote from... U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. John Bolton, who said probably the first intelligent thing I've ever heard him say, he also warns that the agreement is trying to act as though it is really just a treaty about international arms trade between nation states, but there is no doubt that the real agenda here is domestic firearms control. Okay? They're talking about your small guns. You're talking, they're talking about the guns that can be used in a guerrilla war against the United Nations when they come to invade and send troops from other countries here to take your guns. That's what it's talking about. But you know what? You don't believe me, do you? You're still in denial, aren't you? Those who are out there in denial. Well, let's go to a clip. It's going to start off with the New Orleans chief of police during Katrina saying, no one will be allowed to have guns. All weapons will be taken. And then it's going to go to today's show where Mike Adams got a call from someone who was actually in Katrina with the 40, 45th Infantry Brigade. I'm sorry I'm flustered because this information is really disturbing me right now. He was there confiscating guns. They were going door to door. They were kicking in as they asked, do you need any assistance? Boom. Do you have any guns? We're taking them. You said guns, guns will be taken. And no one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. Today in New Orleans, they got a lot tougher on the holdouts. Police department in your home! Not only the flooded areas, but New Orleans' driest and wealthiest neighborhoods, too. Police department! The police and National Guard going street by street, house to house, sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn and instructions to disarm anyone inside. Uh, let's go to Chris in Oklahoma. Chris, you're on the air on The Alex Jones Show. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Hells Ranger. How's it been? It's good. It's good here, man. How about yourself? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I was with the 45th Infantry Brigade and Delta Company 1st at the 279. Uh, second platoon. Um, during Hurricane Katrina, I'm kind of calling it in on yesterday's subject. I'm sorry about that. It's all right. But uh, I don't. It's just I've always wanted to get a hold of you guys and kind of get the word out there for those that still have that slight hesitation in the back of their head 
that gun confiscation can't and won't happen here. It already has. And I was only 21 years old, just really gung-ho, really dedicated to the Army, especially to the infantry. And uh, I did whatever I was told. And and what, what did they ask you to do? How I first let's see. The first thing we did was we got a a three week uh, a book full of three week old nine one one phone calls, right? And then we had to go around and answering all the phone calls. So we were like cadaver dogs for about three weeks. And in between them, we would run night missions. And here's the thing: a lot of people may think that they'll see this on the news or they'll have time to to get ready when you know when the when the crap hits the fan or whatever. It's just, it, it's a truck, you know what I mean? It's a group of trucks, they pull up, they stack right on your home, as we did, and we broke entry. Yeah, we would yell out, Oklahoma Army National Guard, is anybody in need of assistance? But that's as we were booting in the door. But wait a minute, it sounds like you weren't part of the Oklahoma National Guard. I mean, you were you were U.S. military. Yeah, I was, uh, I was activated. Um, I think about a week after Katrina, I was I was watching it on on, on the news, and Sher Kamiko of Fox Twenty Three told me before my unit even got a hold of me that I was going to New Orleans. So wow! We, so so uh, when yeah, we got we got sent in, and we were we were the very very first boots on the ground. Alpha Company, and you were uh, confiscating you were confiscating firearms, left and right. Yes, and wow. we were also uh, monitoring the New Orleans police because we kept having like. You know, like the first day we had this little beautiful red-headed lady come up. All right, wait a minute. We, we, we're almost out of time. Will you stay on the line for us, please? I want to continue with you on the other side. Stay on the line with us. This is fascinating. We're going to continue this right here on the Alex Jones Show. We'll be right back. That happened today in this wealthy neighborhood where homeowners had armed themselves to protect their mansions. <laughs> Residents were handcuffed on the ground. In the end, police took their weapons but let them stay in their homes. They were a little bit threatened because our weapons were bigger than their weapons. Chris Montgomery says he'd rather be in Iraq than patrolling American neighborhoods. Walking up and down these streets, you don't you don't want to think about the stuff that you're going to have to do. Somebody pops around the corner. Let me shoot an American. Yeah. We have Chris on the line from Oklahoma relating a story about gun confiscation in New Orleans and, and that entire region following Hurricane Katrina several years ago. And uh, Chris, go go ahead. You were saying you were describing how you, you and your your, uh, your team were kicking indoors and confiscating firearms from people. Uh, did anybody resist? Did anybody ever shoot back? W what happened? Well, we had uh, we had a couple of people uh, resist verbally, and they got stuffed and cuffed very violently. Uh, we throw them in the back of the uh, the five ton or the deuce and a half or whatever, and then we take them out to uh, the Greyhound bus station, which was the police station at the time. We like what I was saying like before we came up or before the break. Uh, with the, like I think it was like the second day we were there. This redheaded lady came up to our platoon's area and she sat or to our company area. She sat on the curb with her knees in her chest, just rocking back and forth, crying uncontrollably. She sat there for almost twenty-seven hours, just refused to move. We you know we talked to her, we did everything we could, just didn't want to you know. You could tell she had been through enough. She'd been repeatedly raped by men in NOPD masks. And NOPD uniforms. Oh, you're kidding me. So, oh, yeah. So we were told, you know, at that point we were told the NOPD obviously isn't our friend. We need to start watching them. The FBI had us out there at Cooter Brown, which is uh, the NOPD Sheriff's Brothers Bar. It's like the big cop bar there in New Orleans. Just so people know, NOPD is New Orleans Police Department, just, yeah. just for people who know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, or or so, the police department. So a, a lot of those cops were then just total total rogue. I mean, we saw a video of some of them going in and looting uh, retail stores and things like that. But they were raping women down there. Definitely raping women. They were. <laughs> uh, we got two two separate women that came to our company alone. And when I was there, I met cats from the uh, California Guard, Indiana Guard, you name it. Everybody was. And but how it was uh, it was just a free for all. Every, police from all over the country, Dallas Dallas County. Dallas, Texas sheriffs down there. But how how did you and your team justify to yourselves and each other that gun confiscation would help this situation when it was a free for all? I mean, isn't that yeah. a time when citizens need to be able to defend themselves? It never, you know, like I said, I was just ignorant as hell, and that's kind of something that I worry about with the with the kids today. You know, if they really realize what they're doing, you know, I, I had no idea. The only time it ever occurred to me that something may be wrong is we came up, uh, we were down by uh, the old French district. We came up to this man's house. He had a big wooden sign that says, I'm here alone uh, with my dog and my shotgun. Looters beware. We thought, you know, it's funny. Everyone stopped and took pictures of the sign. But eventually we took his guns. 
Jeez. And we left him there with nothing. I, you know, um, so now that you know what you know, now that you're 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 listening to the Alex Jones show and you're you're informed, what would you advise people to do if this happens again? Well, I called. I mean, uh, no, no, no offense. I mean, Mike would we'll love everything you do. I'm a big fan of the Health Ranger, but I was hoping to get a hold of Alex for the fact that what do you do when they stack right? You know what I mean? And, yeah. And they're prepped to come into the home. There's no, there's no negotiating with us. Trust me. There was no negotiating. Yeah. You, if you resisted, you died. That were the orders. You go after Gunner, you die. Yeah, but but well, I mean, this this is invaluable information. I'm, I apologize. We only have a limited limited time here. I got to let you go. Uh, just we've got so much more coming up here. But fascinating. I hope I hope you call back and uh, get get to Alex as well. You know, uh, I'll, I'll I'll pass on this conversation. Uh, to Alex and let him know, but that's that's some frightening information, and it's. I just hope that the military, that, that you know that that the, the members of the military say no. They refuse to to engage in gun confiscation because no doubt there there could be outbreaks of violence and a lot of needless death and bloodshed if that happens. But uh, thank you for your call, Chris. That's that's very concerning. It was traumatic. All of a sudden, they were banging on the front door, the side door, and the back door, and they said, let us in. I'm saying, look at all my food. I got plenty of food. They kept pushing me back, pushing me back, and ended up like this. Then, Patty showed them a small revolver she was carefully holding in the palm of her hand. A camera crew was there to capture what unfolded next. I said, it's not even loaded, and I dropped it on the floor. You got a gun, left, left. Well, they punched me in the face. Left now. Look at my black and blue marks, look at... You say guns, guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. So if you're still doubting, there's the proof there. They went into New Orleans, they went into the high and dry areas, they went in just to grab guns because that's what they were training to do. It wasn't about helping people, it was about taking people's guns to see if they could get away with it under a crisis. And that's how it's going to happen. It's going to happen in the dead of night. Did you hear the soldier talking? He said, we pulled up at night and we just busted in and grabbed guns. That's how they do it. They're not going to be, hey, please turn in your guns. No, it's going to be right down to the wire and you're not even going to know that they're going to be there until they're on top of you while you're sleeping in your bed. So you better start making a plan. You better start having firearms. You better start learning how to shoot. You better start getting ammo. Because if you don't exercise the Second Amendment, it will be taken from you. And when the Second Amendment goes, it's you in tyranny. It's boots on your forehead. It's slave internment camps. And it's all going to happen. They've all been making plans. Remember in July, uh, early July, July 6, we had the article by Paul Joseph Watson. Army manual outlines plans to kill rioters and demonstrators in America. Newly leaked U.S. Army military police training manual for civil disturbance operations, that means here in the United States, outlines how military assets will be used domestically to quell riots, confiscate firearms, and even kill Americans on soil during mass civil unrest. Warning shots will not be fired. And that he linked to a Hong Pong document, and we can go to that, and it shows you some of the things they're going to use. Oh, there's the grenade launchers they're going to use against you. There's the little round that they're going to put in there as they shoot at you. Okay? That's what it's all about. It's all about you. It's all, actually, it's all about them creating the crisis. And then they come at you and take your guns, because the crisis has been created. It's unfolding right now. Okay? The economy is going down the tubes. Everywhere in Austin, they have these uh, free or so-called free money title loans things where they give you free money or so-called, but then they come and take your property. Those only happen when there's a bad economy and when people don't have jobs, and they're springing up everywhere like weeds, okay? And they're brand new, and they're painted, and they just, boom, they pop up. There's five of them right around my house. And I live in a pretty decent area of town, but it just says everybody's hurting. And when people start hurting, people start doing crazy things. Just like Gerald Salente says, when they lose everything, they lose it. And that's going to be the pretext to come in and start taking people's guns, and the Army's going to be kicking in doors, and they're training the National Guard to do it, and they're training the military police to do it, and they're training your SWAT teams, and they're giving them giant battle tanks to do it. It's all coming down. One more article I want to get to. 
Army Corps trained soldiers to confiscate constitutionally protected firearms. That was from Kurt Nemo the same day we released the other one. Right, And we got that from the guys over at Hong Pong. Dan Fight sent that to us. And um, in addition to revealing how federal government and Pentagon will respond to civil disturbances in violation of the 1878 Posse Comitatus Act, the United States Military Police School's Civil Disturbance Operations document instructs how military will confiscate Americans' weapons from American citizens. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm not reading everything eloquent right off a teleprompter, but I'm scared. This is scary information. You need to get this out to everybody you know right now. It's all there. You could go check out the headline. We gave you the headlines. Go read the articles. Go to the links. Go read this document right here. Here it is. It says it in plain English. The United States Program for General and Complete Disarmament in a Peaceful World. It's all right there. You better get this information out. Don't waste any more time. You better get some guns. You better get a plan. You better learn how to shoot. Don't waste this time now that we have because it is precious. And the time is running short. 